Okay. Uh, first of all, I don't really speak English, so uh, I'm going to read my text. So GDPR, um, don't be afraid, I won't talk a lot about cookies and, uh, uh, and pop-ups and uh, all, of the, uh, all of these um, boring stuff, but there could be uh, cookies or macarons at the end anyway. Uh, there are some things that's not much discussed about GDPR. In, that's not my fault. I'm trying to avoid that. <laughs> Let me. Uh, so there are some things that's not a lot uh, discussed about GDPR. And, uh, and some uh, other local regulations. Also the, the, um, it's the right uh, to data portability. So in theory now, we have the right to transfer our data from one service to another. Uh, that's something new. Let's think about this. First question, what data can we transfer? Uh, there's, not, there's not much really. We, we could transfer our emails, but we always could. Email is a standard, and uh, there's nothing that can stop you to transfer your emails uh, at least one by one from one provider to another. So um, there's no, re no reason for providers to stop you to do that, and there, there is usually a lot of tools to export your emails anyway. So there's nothing new here. Uh, you also can export your address book, uh, but there's nothing new here that, mm, anymore, uh, mm, too. Uh, there's a standard, there's no reason to prevent the user to do the, to do the same as email, so again, nothing new. But there's the, the, we have the GDPR, and so we have the, this right now to transfer our personal data from where we want. That's huge. Um, GAFAM now have to let us export our data at any time. I, for instance, I could export my, one of my Facebook Messenger uh, conversations to a PDF file and read it offline. That's useful. Or even I could export my whole Twitter archive. I do this usually to save it and uh, I can download it and that's it. Maybe I can grab in it to find some telephone, some, some information I sent one day, maybe. I don't know. But anyway, uh, I, I always could do these things. That's not really new. Uh, again, there's nothing new. But there's a law, so maybe there's some code somewhere. As code is law. And there is... Um, a data transfer protocol existing that was published in, uh, in 1971. Uh, and there's another uh, data transfer protocol that uh, began one year ago, and that is a collaboration between uh, organizations committed to building a common framework with open source code that can connect any two online service providers enabling a seamless, direct transfer of data. Now there's something new. According to the DTP, DTP partner, it should, when it's ready, allow data to be transferred directly between service providers without downloading it at all. And that would be a big step. But let's see who are those DTP partners. Voilà. Here you are, with such big partners, uh, no doubt this should be a big success. So let's see the new use cases we should see in the future as a result from our new right to transfer our data. You, you won't read it, it's small, but here you are, all the use cases that they foresee right now. Um, I could uh, resume this. Uh, we now, we will 
export our photo directly from our Twitter account to a photo printing service. We could save our playlist to the cloud. Someone could write some code to exploit the API from a service provider in order to export our data. Or we could even transfer our files from one place to another without downloading, downloading, downloading it <laughs> at home first. Uh, that, that's a great novelty, as you can imagine. And according to the, those partners, this should have a particularly big impact in global markets. As they say, so let's be serious for a moment and all these DTP and all this um, uh, right to data portability is nearly useless for now, of course, but it's a work in progress. So maybe there's some more to come on GitHub as it's a free software. And let's see what's happening now on GitHub about DTP. There's an export extension for Facebook photos. There's an import export extension for Flickr photos. You can import export nearly anything from your Google Plus account. Okay, probably export uh, only as it's closing. Mm, but uh, anyway, I don't think you had any Google Plus account anyway. So there's nothing to download now. Uh, you, could, you could also export uh, your Instagram photo or ex import export your calendars, contact or photo from your Microsoft accounts. You got it. There's nothing new. But there's one more thing. In, the, in this GitHub repository, you could now import export your Mastodon stream from one instance to another, and this is huge. Although Mastodon maintainers announced some days ago that such a functionality will anyway be included in this project soon enough, but it's really interesting anyway because at least it's about moving more than a few photos. Here you could maybe uh, export move your followers from one instance to another, that's something really new there. But what's really interesting in it the, is the second question I should ask is, where can we transfer our data if we have the right to transfer them? We, we saw that there's not much data we can download, but where can we upload them? Okay, I, I can import my Twitter and nothing more. I could maybe, uh, with some luck one day, import my follower, my Twitter followers to my Mastodon accounts, but uh, I doubt that there will be much of them having a Mastodon account anyway, so uh, I won't get any more followers on Mastodon and I will lose probably all my contacts on Twitter if I quit Twitter doing this. So let's face it, this whole right to transfer is meaningless. It looks great in press releases. It, you can, uh, when a minister says, hey, look, uh, you have a new right uh, I brought you, it looks good, but when you think about it, there's very, really some, nothing you can do with it. It won't change anything with centralization and surveillance capitalism because it, it, it can't be used to decentralize. And it won't never hurt the, the economic models of the DTP partners, as we saw. But it looks good in the press release too, of course. That's why they created DTP. So I think this new DTP thing should uh, rejoin the, pre the previous one in the shadows of this story. Okay, now maybe I have to say one more word about me for those who don't know me. I'm working today on a project that, that's called uh, Calliopen. In Calliopen, we, we need to match private messages from any sources 
or protocol into one timeline. For instance, you can start a conversation with Twitter, uh, with a Twitter private message, ex exchange there your emails and continue the, your conversation by email. And it will be one only conversation on your Calliopean timeline. And of course, it would be great if some kind of regulation could force any platform to give access to your personal data from the outside, because we could then add your Facebook private message to your Twitter timeline, to you, <laughs> can you open timelines too? But we can't. Today we can't. So of course that's one reason why I'm so interested in the GDPR and the right to transfer. And obviously, today it's useless for us but even if you could maybe one day export all your private conversation and contact book from Facebook and today you can't, it would be a one-shot operation. You would have to your past Facebook messages on your, on your, on your timeline, but uh, you couldn't continue the conversation with your contact because it's just one time, you, you download the, your history, but nothing more. We, you, you, today you can do it with Twitter because Twitter API is open, but we are not sure it will stay open if there's no regulation to force them to do. So today you can, have, you can start a conversation from Kelly Open with your Twitter contact and continue it, but we are not sure you will today. You could do it to the earth <laughs> tomorrow. So that's why if we want a, a real open decentralized internet, uh, if you want to fight surveillance capitalism, then of course we need to create a new useful service, uh, services that it's not enough. We also need to have a means to keep our contacts, our social networks from the GAFAM to the new services we will create. And that's not possible with the right to, the, to transfer. If we want people to adopt such tools and leave the GAFAM, we cannot just explain to them that our services are more respectful of their privacy. It's not enough. The Snowden moment is uh, more than five, five years old now, and even when privacy respectful services exist, their success is way too low to compete with GAFAM. Where ProtonMail has maybe three, three million users, Gmail has more than one billion. Where Bastodon has maybe more than one million users, Twitter has, has more than 300 million, not talking about Facebook. So don't get me wrong, those are uh, really great tools, successful, but we can't, we can't see it as any kind of real decentralization. The numbers show it. We cannot expect general public to leave their habits only for privacy. It just doesn't work. As long as their friends are on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram, people will stay there. And that's why this right to transfer is meaningless. And that's why what we really need is a right to access. If we can access, if I can access my personal data from any service I choose, then maybe I can leave Facebook without leaving all my social life behind. If I can read my Hotmail mailbox without logging on Microsoft, maybe I won't have to tell all my address books that I changed my email address. If I can check my Amazon passbook purchases from my, from my local bookstore app, then maybe I won't choose to continue buying from my Amazon just to make sure I won't order the same book again. That's a real story. But of course, it won't happen if there's no regulation to enforce such a real right. We have to ask our representative for a real right to access our data to be included in the next e-privacy regulation. That's all for me. But 
as always, I brought, I, I brought some macarons to thank you for listening. So if you want some, uh, I will leave them on the table, maybe. I don't know. Thanks, uh, Laurent. Any questions? Um, thanks for the talk. I really like the idea, but do, are you aware if there is any actions going on to uh, to move to something like this? I just said, are you aware if there is any action uh, moving towards something like this? Because the idea is really good, but is there something concrete about it to move GDPR to something closer to this? Today, uh, for what I know, uh, the French regulator, uh, RCEP, when it was ruled by uh, the, his previous uh, director, was... Uh, agreed with these views. I don't know it, if it will know that uh, it changed. And um, all we can hope is to contact and uh, explain those things to our local uh, policy directors. I don't know. Maybe you should contact your, DP, your uh, representatives before the privacy to come. It should be included in e privacy. Uh, it should be, it, it's just a logical thing that I created those private, private data so they can use it to make money. That's logical. That's the, that's the deal. But still, those are my data. I should have access to them any, from anywhere, from where I choose to get to access them. That's my point. And that is, I think, the way to get a real decentralization happen. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I've, I see people getting up and leaving the room. Again, I have to ask you to stay, sit until the period of question is finished because it makes noise. Uh, the, the presenter cannot always hear the questions and it's annoying, annoying for the stream. So please do not be disrespectful. Stay, sit until the end of the questions. Any question? Okay. Thank you. Uh, today, GDPR uh, enables you to have your data, but in 30 days, right? Uh, they, every company has 30 days to give the data, right? Do you think it's enough, or, or sorry, do you think it's maybe too long to be able to have a really full portability with a unified API for a full ecosystem? With messaging, for example, like 30 days is, is history already, right? No, but, okay, no, it, it won't be enough, but as we all know here, those data were, will never be deleted anyway, so the, the right to transfer and to access them should be forever. I don't, I, I don't see why the FM would uh, delete our data. They will not delete. They, they will not delete. But in a context of user experience, oh. right, 30 days can be like really old if I really want to have portability between services. What's your point on that, please? Uh, I don't think so. It depends really on data. Uh, you, you, your uh, social graph is not old in 30 days. You, and, and that's one of the major points. Uh, even if you lose your, your messages, okay, it's not a big deal because maybe you have a, a backup, a local backup, or, or you can anyway continue to discuss and, and forget about those old messages. But your, your social graphs, your friends, the friends of your friends, the people you interact with on, on a daily basis, that's, that's the, the important thing. That's the, the reason why people won't leave their farms if they can't have access to the message uh, their friends exchange between them, for instance. Any other question? Yes, okay. Hello? Um, yes, so we are talking about, um, we're talking about uh, uh, private data here. Um, 
What I find strange is that there's an ambiguous um, thing to it. So on one hand, it's our data. On the other hand, the data is being held by a separate entity. Um, that's for a matter of convenience, but um, I, I'm trying to understand the, 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 port, the, the problem with portability here uh, because I was trying to follow you. Um, I would say the, the, the data, some of it, should at least be in the hands of the, the users, or at least they should be able to track what's happening with it. That, that would be a minimum because we don't know what's being done with it. <laughs> that, that, that would be great, but I, will, I don't think it, it, it will happen any day because users don't realize that. that it should be way too complicated for the general public to understand. It will, it will be way too complicated. To complicate yeah, complicated, yes, true. Yeah. For the general public to understand those points. For the, they don't know really where, where is their data. That, that's not... Uh, important to them. Yes, uh, there's a question of education as well, interest. Uh, uh, yeah. Maybe one day, if we, but we have to start with access to data. Then maybe we can educate people to get mm. those data at home and develop tools to, to make it happen. But the first step is to have the right to access them. I think it is. The right? To access those data. Yeah, yeah. I definitely agree. Definitely agree. Maybe I should uh, um, say it. Uh, for Calliopen, we we are looking for uh, another company besides Gandhi to support it, in order to ask uh, the EU for a grant. We we want to file a submission for a grant in the EU, but we need uh, another company to to partner with Gandhi in France. So maybe if your company is interested in Calliopen, uh, get in contact with me. Uh, uh, I will stay here for one hour more, but Stan is here for two days now, uh, even if he doesn't listen to me. Stan? <laughs> so uh, so if, you, if your company is interested, just get in touch. Uh, you can use Twitter to find me easily. And I will get your, ma your private message on my Calliopen account, so do not hesitate to do it. We have the time. Maybe? Sorry. We have the time for one last question. Yes. Uh, nothing related to what you just said. It's only that uh, I fully agree with your argumentation, but I also fully agree with the first question that was asked, because if really uh, you think it's the way through, there should be ways and means to engage uh, with your proposition and you should uh, get some um, way of organizing the community to support this kind of discourse. Uh, I, I advocated those points with La Quadrature du Net that now they are joining me on that battle, of course. As I said, the French regulator was okay with it too, but I don't know if it will in the future. Uh, but uh, I'm only one person, I, uh, I do what I can, but it's not enough, of course. So we have, all of, our, all, all of us have to, to, to work it. <laughs> Maybe the first point is to, uh, to get conscious of this uh, loss of, of this point because I know a lot of people just uh, stopped at the right to data portability without thinking about it. Maybe now we can think about it and, and see that there's more to, to get here. That's not enough and that's nothing new and that's not useful at all. That's the first step, then, then we can act on it and uh, ask our representative to do more. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Laurent.